A sermon for Wednesday in Holy Week. The subject of the verses just read is a painful one. It describes the last scene between Jesus and Judas, Iscariot, before Judas betrays him. They contain almost the last words between them. In our readings tomorrow, we will hear the last words that Jesus has for his faithful eleven, and to them he will give a new commandment, to love as he loves. But for now, Jesus' focus is on the lost sheep, the one who got away. Imagine the scene, it's shortly after the foot washing. Judas and the disciple who, who he loved were seated close to Jesus. There would be a lot of talking, sharing, enjoying of supper going on. And suddenly Jesus declares to everyone that he is troubled in spirit. Very true, of, I'll, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, he said. Disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking a natural reaction of those who were innocent and had no idea what was happening. But Jesus' outburst would be a signal to Judas that his secret was out, that Jesus knew what he was intending. Jesus' distress was not only because of what he knew what was to come, but also because he was grieving for his friend. After all, they'd spent many years together. Judas was one of the trusted twelve who had been given special teaching, seen at first hand some of the miracles that Jesus had performed, the one who took on the finances of the group. Now he was about to throw his life away. Jesus doesn't name Judas out loud, but allows him to make his own response. The two men were seated close to each other. They could easily talk or whisper without attracting the attention of the others or allowing them to hear what was said. But Judas remained silent, not taking the opportunity to speak to Jesus. Then the disciple who he loved, egged on by Peter, asked Jesus the question what the others wanted to put, and Jesus gave Judas another chance to come clean. Lord, who is it? It's the one I give this piece of bread when I am dipped it it in the dish. Dipping a piece of bread in the dish and passing it to someone is something you would do for a special friend. So again Jesus was giving Judas an opportunity to come to him, to turn back from his planned course. Judas accepts the bread but again says nothing. The conversation between Jesus and Judas almost appears to have been one way. Jesus offering everything Judas saying nothing. At this point, John says, Satan entered Je Judas. The word Satan in Hebrew means accuser, someone who brings a charge or prosecution against someone else. Judas is being used by the forces of darkness to bring a charge against Jesus, the messenger of light. Jesus' response was swift and direct. Do quickly what you are doing, going to do. Judas left and John finished the verse with the words, it was night, signifying that the confrontation between darkness and light was coming to a climax. Jesus has come to Jerusalem knowing that the knives were out for him, that here his enemies were determined to silence him. They even turned one of his closest followers against him. Yet. He carried on refusing to be deflected from his path. He went willingly to his death despite all that it cost him, despite the emotional and physical trauma he endured, and the motive behind it all was love. Love for us, love that heals, changes and transforms, a love that brings hope, joy and life to those who accept it. And this love will be the badge that future Christian communities will wear before the watching world. Jesus' love is unshakable and would have melted the Judas' heart if he'd chosen to accept it. Jesus shows us that the only way to respond to betrayal is to turn shock and anger into love and compassion. He was ready to help Judas turn back from the sinful path he'd chosen before it was too late. We too must always seek his forgiveness no matter how far we have strayed. 
So in this Holy Week, let's remember the story of Judas and recognise that no matter how bad it gets, the shepherd will always be ready to do his utmost to bring his lost sheep home. And when it comes to our salvation, let's make sure that Jesus has the last word. Amen.